Sal Pal ESPN on Instagram. You, have to. you can get his instant analysis of not only the NFL. I saw Sal Pal last night interviewing Joel Embiid. He got Joel Embiid on Wednesday. He gets LeBron James on Monday. Yeah. Got Eagles football on well, Sunday. Everybody knows Sal Pal. I mean, come on. He's a popular fella. He joins us now on a Sal Pal Thursday special edition. Uh, so what are we talking? NBA, we talking football here, pal. Oh, we got to start with that story in the <laughs> locker room on Monday night. Uh, Mike Gill, uh, you know, it was really a special treat for me because LeBron James uh, had said he was watching. He's been watching me for years on ESPN and for one of the most recognizable sports figures or celebrities in the world to say that he not only recognizes but appreciates my work on ESPN was pretty cool. It was really cool, and it was pretty cool to sit there and listen. And I talked a little bit about this yesterday, how he just was so he, giddy yeah, was, talking to football. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he was just was like a guy guy. who was sitting here and talking about, hey, I know you. I, I see you every Monday, Sunday. I have my routine. I get up at 9. I wait for your reports at 10. Uh, but he was not only glowing about that. He's obviously a football fan. He's a big Carson Wentz fan, too. Yeah, and, you know, it was pretty interesting because his analysis was detailed and spot on, talking about <laughs> Carson Wentz's ability to – you know, go through his progressions and uh, deliver the football, his toughness, accuracy. It, it, it was astounding. I, I, you know, I, I just like the fact that he was able to toggle back and forth between talking about the NBA and the NFL with such detail. Now, if uh, somebody was paying attention, we would have had all this conversation on video, but I was, yeah. I was asleep That's at the wheel. That's what happens when you have a radio guy standing a couple feet away, and the, t- the former TV guy is catching up with his buddy Kyle Comer. I kind of ha- was half in one conversation, half in the other, Sal, but that's on me. I apologize. I should have had my phone out because I know how to look through a viewfinder. I will never let Mike Gill live that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to fall on the sword for him here, Sal, yeah. and you're not letting me. Well, I apologize. Well, I did see uh, <laughs> afterwards. Gonna, he hey, said, hey, Mike, it's going to cost you uh, a medium coffee, extra cream, <laughs> extra sugar, and two donuts at Dunkin' Donuts, buddy. Next time I see you. Uh, done. I, I, you know, I, I told you afterwards, you said, did you get that? And I said, well, I don't want to impose it on the conversation. I was enjoying the conversation, to which, by the way, LeBron, Sal, is a big Cowboys fan, right? And for him to say, I heard him say, Eagles-Patriots, that was his Super Bowl. Yeah, I asked him, who do you got in the bowl? And he said, Birds and Patriots. Well, nice. I'll tell you what, that would be a dream matchup. But right now, I don't think the Eagles could beat the Patriots. All right, well, uh, well, another day for that. Uh, you talked to Joel B last night, too. You got to see LeBron on Monday, who's probably the biggest star in the game. But I guess Joel is uh, quickly trying to get his name in that conversation. I mean, he's another guy that, man, you, you've got a chance to really uh, come across paths with some big stars this week. And if you haven't seen Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons in person, you need to go down to a Sixers game and watch them play. Uh, they have a, they have uh, already developed a nice chemistry. Uh, ben Simmons has a quiet, killer attitude like Kobe Bryant. And Joel Embiid can run the floor. Uh, he's got a really beautiful, soft-touch jump shot. He's imposing in the middle. Uh, you know, I think one of the, the coolest moments last night, end of the second quarter, Embiid rejects uh, a shot in the low post. Simmons grabs it on the wing, and they run the floor together, and Simmons dishes to Embiid at the last possible second, who flushes it with .2 seconds left on the clock, and the place really erupted. So you got to go down and see him in person to really appreciate their ability. No doubt. And, and uh, next time I will make sure uh, I have my camera ready to go uh, when you're in the presence of LeBron James. Uh, Sal Powell's with us. The Eagles are going to hop this flight. They're going to go to Seattle. And uh, do you think, Sal, they play Carolina on the road. Um, that San Diego, or that L.A. team has turned it on. They've been pretty good recently. They had to go to, to uh, L.A. and play down there. But do you, is this their toughest road test of the year? Oh, it, it certainly is for a number of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, both opponents are highly motivated. Secondly, it's always difficult to play in Seattle. Thirdly, I think Seattle is going to be doubly motivated that they are a a five-and-a-half-point dog at home to the Eagles. They have not been a home dog since 2012. Let me repeat that. The 
The Seattle Seahawks have not been a home dog for five years. You've got to believe that that is being used as motivation by Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson and the rest of that proud team. So I think this is they have to focus on this. And the, and the last thing is Doug Peterson made the decision, it's a good one, to keep the team out on the West Coast so they have to pack their bags for not only Seattle, but also Los Angeles and the practices in between. And the one thing we know is that professional athletes, especially football players, don't like their routine disrupted. Right. So this will be a huge challenge, much different from the Panthers, much different from the quick trip to the Chargers. This is a huge challenge. If, if they sweep these two games, right this rest of the season off in the NFC, they, they will go to the Super Bowl. Well, uh, uh, that, that to me is, is if they sweep these two games, that will be truly an impressive feat. Right, because they can win the division tonight with a Dallas loss. They could play this game on Sunday night as the NFC East champions already, and then they're really just playing for a home field. And you're looking at, at what point is that a disadvantage for you that you've got so much wrapped up so soon? It's great to say, hey, by November you've won the division and maybe clinch home field advantage two weeks from now, but is that a bad thing? No, Mike, I, I, think, I think this team is not going to rest players. I think... This team is motivated to have the best possible record they can have. They're on the doorstep of history, and I think they want to keep knocking on that door. I don't see them letting up. I really don't. South Powell's with us here, Eagles and uh, Seahawks Sunday night. Now, we know the Seahawks are not the Legion of Boom. They've got all sorts of injuries in that secondary. The Eagles have run the ball, Sal, 175 yards or more in three straight games. They've gone over 100 yards rushing 10 straight now, longest in the league. So do they just keep running the ball, or do they? Are, is Doug Peterson going to be inclined to go after this beat-up secondary? Yeah, and, and their two corners are listed as questionable, too. Jeremy wow. Lane and Shaquille Griffin. So, um, yeah, but they've, they've got injuries. Earl Thomas is coming back from an injury. Obviously, he's been back a couple of weeks, but he's not 100%. Their middle linebacker, Bobby Wagner, is questionable with an injury. So they have injuries, and, you know, I think the Eagles will continue to try to do what they want they've been doing. But the bottom line is this, Mike. They cannot have the ball on the ground four times like they did against the Bears. They can't have 11 penalties. They can't kick it out of bounds and give them the Seahawks a short field. Um, you know, both Malcolm Jenkins and LeGarrette Blount, leaders on defense and offense, both said that you know, that won't be good enough against the better teams in December. If you go back to last year, when the Eagles lost that game 26-15, uh, to 15, they had two big turnovers. Carson went through two interceptions. So um, I, I think if they, if they are careful with the football and keep to their offensive game plan and stop the run, number one is stop the run. Remember last year they gave up 152 yards rushing, including that 75-yarder to C.J. Procise in the first mm -hmm. quarter first possession of the game that gasher that was a demoralizing gasher so um i i think if they stop the run and they're giving up 65 yards a game they'll be pretty they'll be pretty good in this game they'll be pretty good but this is a fourth quarter game this will not be like rest carson wentz with nine minutes to go well, yeah, so, and this, you mentioned the running game last year. They don't run the ball a lick. Uh, Wilson's their leading rusher by a long shot against the best rushing team. So if you're Philly uh, defensively, you got to feel pretty good that you can, you know, you can have a one track mind in this game. And Russell Wilson's one track to kind of keep an eye on, but they can't run the ball at all. And you've got the best rushing defense uh, in the league. Yep. But when, when Doug Peterson closed the door on Wednesday on the team meeting, uh, he lectured the players pretty hard about penalties and turnovers. You know, they had eight penalties last last year in Seattle with two picks. And they had 11 penalties on Sunday against the Bears. That's not going to be good enough to beat Seattle if they have 11 penalties. They'll, they'll lose the game. Now, how much do you think that Carson Wentz got the play there last year is a big help for this year's game? I don't think it really matters. I don't. I think it's a different matchup because it's a different set of players. 
the overall, I would say the biggest thing is this. Carson Wentz has veteran help in this game. Al Jeffrey, LeGarrette Blount, Jay Ajayi. Mm -hmm. And his whole team is playing with confidence. Uh, but I don't, I don't try to compare it year in and year out uh, like that. That I think. Well, it, it, I, should, I, I just should. mean more of the atmosphere, the fact that he got because Seattle's oh, a little different, oh, and the yeah. fact that he got to experience Seattle last year, kind of get that out of the way now. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I do, I do. But um, if they they got to make plays in this game, and 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 that'll be the key to me. I think All right. you know what I think. I think I think Mike. I think the defense of the Eagles is more important than how Carson Wentz plays. Yeah, and, and uh, you know their offensive line's a mess. This Eagles defense should be able to get some pass rush too. I mean, it seems like a great matchup. But when you text Doug Peterson on Sunday and you appear on Countdown with his response of the keys, what's he going to tell you? Ah, you got to tune in. Actually, I won't <laughs> be covering the game. I won't be there. Um, I'll be, you know, we have a whole different crew that covers Sunday night football in most instances, and they've asked me to go to Oakland to, to, to follow the Giants. The, the Giants, so that I'm, whole uh, situation. What do you, yeah, well, so I'm going well, how do you think that's been handled, Sal? How do you think that's been handled? Yeah, what a, what a mess. You know, and <laughs> you know, you remember Ben McAdoo was the Eagles first, one of the Eagles first choices for, for head coach? <laughs> yes, yes. We and talked a little bit about that yesterday. Gase. And Gase, Before right? Peterson. Yeah. So, so you'll be in Oakland, Oakland for that. I'm cover that game, and then uh, I'll fly down to John Wayne Airport in Orange County, meet up with the Eagles in Costa Mesa um, when they arrive on Monday. And I'll be out there all week. So what, nice. I, what, I'll, what I'll plan to do is, uh, since I'm going to be with the birds in Costa Mesa, I might as well do a live report from there. Next week, next Wednesday, I'll do a live report from uh, Eagles practice. Nice. Well, that'll be awesome. We'll uh, touch base, see what's happening. We could be talking about the uh, NFC East champs. We could be thinking about that on Sunday night if Dallas loses tonight against Washington. And uh, I'll remember, Sal, I got the camera all set for the next time. And, don't, you know, and, I got, and I got the coffee ready. The coffee will be ready next time. C and C, coffee and camera. <laughs> all right, Sal, have a safe trip out to Oakland. Okay, thanks for having me on, Mike.